So what's the difference between a will and a living trust? And why the heck are we talking about it on a channel that discusses assisted reproduction? We'll stick around and you'll find out. Hello, I'm Corlando Scott, and I'm an assisted reproduction attorney in Los Angeles. And that basically means that my practice revolves around helping people have babies and helping people who are doing it through assisted reproduction. So in this episode, we're going to cover what the main purpose of a will is and the main purpose of a living trust. We'll look at the difference between a will and a living trust, and we'll talk about why estate planning is important in surrogacy. Let's get to it. Now, we'll get to a much more specific application here in a minute, but generally, when you have a family or you're building or growing your family, which is what assisted reproduction is all about, it just becomes more important to address that difficult but necessary discussion about what happens when you're gone. So whether you did or didn't grow your family through assisted reproduction, and especially if you're considering starting the journey of growing your family through assisted reproduction, you just need to have a plan. And it's not about control. I mean, maybe there's a little bit of control. You want to control what you work so hard in your life to accomplish and to obtain. But ultimately, control is not the main reason. Really, you want to protect your interests, your estate, and everything else that concerns you and your family. That means your spouse, your children, your parents, your siblings. And if you're a business owner, you know, you're thinking about your partners, your employees, your board of directors, everyone else that may have an interest in what you've worked for your whole life. And, you know, it'll turn it into an open market once you're gone if there's no plan in place. So that's where a will or even a living trust comes into play. It's a way of making arrangements for everything before you pass away to make sure that the right person gets the right things at the right time. Again, I'm going to tie it directly to surrogacy in a minute, but you may be wondering, why are we talking about wills? What does it have to do with surrogacy? Well, outside of the specific application that we'll talk about in a moment, Surrogacy is a, is a long process. It can take around a year or even more, give or take, and anything can happen in that time frame. I mean, let's face it, anything can happen in a day. So even if you're undergoing the surrogacy process and you haven't yet you know, got a surrogate who's been pregnant or whatnot, it's really important to clarify what's going to happen in case you or any party to the agreement, number one, gets divorced. Not saying that you would, but if, if you were to get divorced, who gets custody of the baby? Now, who assumes the responsibility outlined in the surrogacy agreement? We have to discuss what could possibly happen if you became incapacitated. Who would be appointed as the guardian for you? You know, who would be appointed as potentially a guardian for your child? And lastly, heaven forbid, what would happen in the case that you pass away? You know, if you go into the light, who would be a guardian for your child? So you may be wondering, what's the difference really between a will and and a trust. Well, I'll start with a similarity. Both are tools that can help to make sure that your assets are protected and that your assets go to the people you want them to go to. Now, both a will and a trust transfer your estate to your heirs, but only a trust can skip the process of going to the probate court. Yeah, your will, that's going to go through probate and your will may even be contested, but your trust need not go through probate and your trust can't be contested. Also, a will becomes active only after one's death. You hear people talk about a living will and I'm like, what is, what is that? A will becomes active after your death, but a trust becomes active the day you create it. Also, unlike a will, a living trust allows assets to be distributed before the death of the testator or the person who you know, created the trust. Also, another thing to remember, wills become public record. So that's something to keep in mind. While on the opposite side, trust, they remain private documents. But you're still probably asking, what does this have to do with surrogacy, Corlandos? Well, let's talk about that. But first, I'll tell you only if you click the like button. No, I'm not, I'm not going to pressure you like that, but go ahead, please click it so, so I can tell you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I like YouTube. And now YouTube knows it. And now YouTube will share it with other people. Look at what you've done. You've changed the world. So there are some points where your will or your trust and the surrogacy arrangement really overlap or at least have shared interests. 
So for instance, your surrogate is going to want to make sure and your attorney and the agency and everyone involved is going to want to make sure that we have something in place. God forbid your surrogate gets pregnant, but you don't make it to the delivery day. So there's going to be questions that your will or a trust could address, like who steps in and handles your obligations in the surrogacy arrangement? What happens to the rights of the party? What is going to happen to the unborn child? Who will be the guardian? Have you set something like that up? Also, the reimbursements, the payments, and the expenses incurred, who's going to step into your position in the contract and continue to fulfill that obligation that you've made to the surrogate? Now, these are some subjects and issues that will be lightly, lightly, lightly touched upon in the terms and the conditions of a surrogacy contract but it pays to have this stuff fleshed out in detail in a separate will or a separate trust or some kind of estate planning document that supports what's in the surrogacy contract. So here's how wills and trust factor into the surrogacy process even more. One of the things that I encourage all of my intended parent clients to consider doing is to create a reproductive estate plan. Now, the reproductive estate plan is just like it sounds. It's an estate plan, but it's specific to your reproductive materials. And it's going to address things like what happens in the event of your demise, or even if you're incapacitated, or a divorce or separation, what happens to the genetic material? Who becomes the guardian? Who is going to be, who's going to have a healthcare directive uh, for you or for your child if you're incapacitated? It's going to address things specific to your reproduction journey and with regards to your reproductive material. So make sure that you at least have a conversation about these kinds of issues with your assisted reproductive technologies attorney. You know, maybe they offer something like this, maybe they don't, but at least they could point you in the direction of someone who could help you. You don't wanna leave these things uncovered and undone. And these are things, again, that will not be covered in great detail in your surrogacy contract. Your surrogacy contract and your surrogate is really interested in if you're not around when the baby's delivered, who's going to take the baby? And also who's going to fulfill the obligations in the contract? Outside of that, you really need a document that spells out the other stuff. The other thing to consider is as an intended parent, if you have remaining or cryopreserved embryos or other genetic material, after you finish growing your family, you have to make sure to address that in your estate planning documents. You want to designate a guardian. You want to establish financial responsibilities for whoever's going to take custody of that genetic material if you're not here. And if you're going to use that genetic material to grow your family, even if you're going to do it posthumously, and if you haven't seen my video on posthumous assisted reproduction, make sure you go check that out. But you have to make sure that you leave some information regarding the support of that child and the establishment of the child's legal parentage. Who gets custody, who's the guardian, and all that stuff. At the end of the day, I'm saying don't leave the will and the trust and the issue of your estate uncovered when you're going through assisted reproduction. That's the perfect time to address those issues. If you're looking for help growing your family through assisted reproduction and you're wondering where to start, don't worry, I have something for you. It's called the Surrogacy Roadmap and you can get it for absolutely free just by clicking the link in the description below. It's my free gift to you for sticking around and watching the video. So click below and you'll get your own free surrogacy roadmap that shows you exactly what to expect in the surrogacy process from beginning to end. So click the link, get it, and I'll see you there.